In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of the gradient vector. So say you have a function, which we'll call f of x, y. Then the gradient vector can be defined as follows. It's del, that's how you read that, del of f of x, y. So the gradient is an operator. It operates on the function and it spits out a vector. The output is the following vector. It's the vector of partial derivatives. So the first component is the partial with respect to x, and the second component is the partial with respect to y. So it takes a function and spits out a vector. So it operates on the function, kind of like if you have ddx of x squared, it's an operator. You plug in x squared, it spits out the derivative. You plug in a function, it spits out a vector that contains derivatives. It's really, really cool. If you have f of x, y, z, then your third component would be the partial with respect to z. Before we talk about what it means, let's do a really simple example. Let's say you have f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared. So how would you find the gradient? It's really, really easy. So the gradient of f of x, y is equal to the vector, and you just take the partials. So if you're finding the partial derivative with respect to x, well here it's just 2x plus 0 because you treat all of the y's as constants. So you're just going to get 2x. And then here when you take the partials, you're taking the partial with respect to y, so all of the x's are constants. So this will be 0 plus 2y, and that's the gradient. So that's how you do it. So what does the gradient do? What is it for? Well, you can use it to find um, directional derivatives. So there's a super useful formula that you can use to find uh, the directional derivative. So if you want to find the directional derivative of a function, f of x, y, in the direction of a unit vector u, this is equal to the gradient. and you dot that with your unit vector u. So this is a, a really useful formula that you often use. In fact, when you're asked to find the directional derivative, this is most often the formula that you see in the problems. Most of the time, you have a vector and you make sure it's a unit vector, so you normalize it if need be. That means turn it into a unit vector. And then you compute the gradient and you take the dot product and you are good to go. But what does the gradient actually mean? So um, the way I like to think about the gradient is if you're standing on like rolling hills, okay, uh, keep in mind uh, this is a 3D graph. So let's like say this is the graph of like a mountain, okay, or like rolling plains. So this is a 3D graph. And the gradient is a vector, but it's a 2D vector. So this is a 2D vector. So if you're standing on rolling hills, the gradient is on the ground, okay? It's on the ground, it's a 2D vector, it's on the floor. And what it does is it points in the direction of maximum increase. So the gradient vector points in the direction at which you will rise up the hills as fast as possible. So if you're standing on rolling hills, the gradient vector will say, hey, go this way if you want to go up as fast as possible, or maybe go this way if you want to go up as fast as possible. So the gradient vector always points in the direction of maximum increase. So if anyone ever asks you, hey, what's a gradient vector? I know how to compute it, but you know what, what does it do? You can say, well, pretend you're standing on like rolling plains, okay, like lots of hills. The gradient is a vector on the ground, it's a 2D vector, like this is the gradient right here on my marker, but it's on the ground and it points in the direction of maximum increase. Because if you're standing on rolling hills, like maybe this way you go up faster than this way. Maybe the, the steepest ascent is this way instead of this way. Uh, likewise, if you put a negative here, it would point in the direction of maximum decrease. Uh, the maximum value of the uh, directional derivative okay, is given by the magnitude of the gradient. It's a, a thing. So a lot of times in problems it'll say, what is the maximum value of the directional derivative? You just take the magnitude of the gradient. But that's it. In the videos that fall, you'll see examples of computing directional derivatives. You'll see examples of finding the maximum value of the directional derivative. And again, that's just this. So the maximum value of the directional derivative is just going to be the magnitude of the gradient. Until next time, take care.